Global competition is increasing at a steady pace. How come some regions develop and grow while others decline? And how come some companies can expand their business in fierce global competition while others are forced to shut down? One important answer is clusters that foster competitive firms and innovations. Clusters and innovation have also come to the forefront in policymaking. How can we design policies at international, national, regional and local levels that strengthen innovation and competitiveness? These are some of the issues that will be discussed by several European experts in this series of programs on clusters, moderated by Professor Orian Solvel from Stockholm School of Economics. Welcome to the series on clusters. This is a series of three programs. The first one is about cluster dynamics. Second one is about cluster policy. And the third one around cluster management, how to organize and manage clusters. But today we are going to view a program around cluster dynamics. It's about how clusters work, what the actors are, uh, the dynamics of clusters and how they evolve over time. If we go back some 20 years, there were two uh, great thinkers, Michael Porter and Paul Krugman, now the Nobel laureate pa uh, Paul Krugman. Uh, they started to uh, discuss and write about clusters and the fact that in spite of increasing globalization uh, and world markets development, the increasing role of clusters uh, was an important one. So they pointed to something of a paradox that in, as we have global markets, uh, i.e. trade around the world, the flow of people and resources around the world, somehow clusters play a very important role. So if we look at the earth from high altitude, it looks rather flat. It looks as if the same economic activity goes on uh, everywhere. But in spite of globalization, we see an increasing role for clusters. Uh, the world is spiky rather than flat. Uh, and these clusters, uh, some of them have a global reach. And we know examples such as Hollywood in the film industry. We have Bollywood in film uh, in India. We have automotive clusters in Europe, in southern Germany, northern Italy, west of Sweden and so forth. There are many of these clusters uh, that play a very important role in these global markets. So while the world has become more and more global, it's somewhat of a paradox that actually local markets and local clusters play an increasingly important role. So today we are going to discuss these clusters, how they function, uh, what the actors are in these clusters and how they develop over time. And for this I brought uh, an expert, Dr. Joran Linkvist. Uh, from Stockholm, uh, from the Center for Strategy and Competitiveness. So, Joran, what do you say? How do these clusters function? What are they? Uh, how do they work? Right. Well, first of all, clusters are agglomerations. They are bunches of things in one location. Um, but there are different types of agglomeration, and all of them are not clusters. So, let's have a little look at that first of all. One type of agglomeration is when you bring economic activity of any kind, any industry, regardless of if it's related to each other or not, in, in one spot or in one, one region. And that's what we call urbanizations. And um, there are economic benefits to this. Uh, cities are, there are efficiency and flexibility effects of this. And in that case, we talk about urban economies or city economies. But in addition, um, cities are also regions where there is a lot of innovation going on. When you bring together different types of activities that generates innovation. And in that context we talk about creative regions or creative cities. Another kind of agglomeration has to do with when you bring together activities which are somehow related to each other, technologically related for example. And this has been studied more than 100 years. And these also have certain kinds of efficiency and flexibility advantages to them. And in that context, we talk about industrial districts. But there are also innovation effects of bringing together related activities. And that's where clusters enter into the picture. So let's have a look at one cluster and, and see what it can look like. So let's go to California, to the city of Santa Cruz, which happens to be a hotspot in surfing. 
And in Santa Cruz, you will find a large number, I mean, more than well over 100 surfboard makers. And they are surrounded by a number of different kinds of firms which are suppliers to the surfboard industry, such as wax manufacturers or chem different kinds of chemicals. And they are also surrounded by uh, retailers, highly sophisticated retailers specializing in surf equipment, surf shops. And they also sell other surf-related materials, such as uh, surf clothing. And of course, these firms are the core of the cluster, but they are not the only members of the cluster. There are other things as well. Um, the local education system caters for this cluster. They provide uh, training and knowledge and even research, which is highly relevant to the surf industry. So they are also, these universities and schools are also part of the cluster. And there is a large number of organizations relevant for the surf industry. We have industry associations, we have festivals, etc. And these organizations help tie the cluster together and help exchange of information. People know what is going on, people pick up rumors, etc. So they are very important. And media plays a large role in this. It, it promotes the image of, of Santa Cruz as a surfboard hot, hotspot. And there are local heroes, uh, surf heroes, that uh, play the role of role models and, and uh, uh, in, in inject identity into the cluster. And to make things even better, um, nearby there is also a lot of activity in snowboard making and skateboard making. And many of the snowboard makers and skateboard makers are also surfboard makers. So, so <coughs> there are other clusters related uh, to surfboard making nearby. So, what can we tell from this picture? Well, we can tell that a cluster is, uh, consists of many different types of actors. Of course, industry is, is the most important. The firms are, are at the core of the cluster, but there are other types of actors as well. Public bodies, government agencies may play a very important role. They make decisions that are important for the cluster. Universities play an important role. They provide training, uh, research and, and uh, development, uh, which is also important. Uh, you have different kinds of organizations for collaboration, anything from, from Rotary to, to industry associations. Media plays an important role and finance, uh, smart money, uh, which is particularly uh, uh, aimed at, at this cluster, plays an important role. So there are a number of different actors and when these actors uh, communicate and interact with each other, you get the kind of, of uh, dynamism in the cluster that makes clusters so, so interesting. This is something we can measure. The degree of concentration is, is something we can measure. And it so happens that different sectors are different, uh, differently highly uh, concentrated. Some are somewhat concentrated publishing, for example. In Europe, you, we have publishing in certain, uh, it's particularly strong in certain locations. But it's also present in many other locations. So it's fairly comparatively dispersed. Whereas automotive industry is, is more, more concentrated and the aerospace industry is highly concentrated to a few regions in Europe. If we compare Europe to the US, we notice that there actually is a difference. Um, Europe is, is becoming a unified market, but we've been working on that for, for rather a short time compared to the United States, which has been an integrated uh, market for, for a very long time. And if we measure the degree of concentration in Europe, it's actually lower than it is in the United States. The reasons we are interested in, in uh, clusters is, of course, that it has a lot of economic benefits. <coughs> One of these economic benefits is that clusters are good locations for new firms. We did a study in Sweden on, on new firm formation in six different high-tech sectors, and we found that it was beneficial for a new firm to be in an environment there that, where there is a lot of other firms in the same sector. So for a finance industry firm, a new firm in finance, it's beneficial to be close to in a place where there are a lot of other finance firms already in, in place. Um, we found that this had an effect on, on the survival uh, rate. They were more likely to survive the more neighbors they had. They were more likely, they, the rate they generated new jobs was higher. They paid higher salaries and they also had the ability to pay more taxes, which is of course of importance for, for politicians. So this is mm -hmm. one of several reasons why, why clusters are important from a policy perspective. 